Shalom Israel, it's Kazawan. And the name of this video is The Original Sin Doctrine is a Lie. I'm doing this video because the original sin doctrine says that everyone is automatically born a sinner. And that's not true. Everyone is not automatically born a sinner. And there is no verse that says that. You only become a sinner once you commit a sin. Let's look at one of the main verses that people use to teach the original sin doctrine. This is Romans 5 and 12. It says, Wherefore, as by one man, sin entered into the world, and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. So people use this verse to say that Adam's sin caused everybody after him to automatically be born a sinner. They say that all have sinned through the sin of Adam. But that's not what this verse is saying. What is the context that Paul is speaking of when he said all have sinned? This is Romans 3 and 10. It says, As it is written, There is none righteous, no, not one. Verse 11, There is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after the Most High. So here, Paul is actually quoting from Psalms chapter 14 in reference to the wickedness of man. He said, none is righteous. But why? Verse 12, it says, they are all gone out of the way. So the reason why he said none is righteous is because man has turned away from righteousness. It says, they are together become unprofitable. So man became unprofitable, but he didn't start off unprofitable. It says, there is none that doeth good, no, not one. So when a person becomes unprofitable because they turned away from righteousness, that person becomes no good to the Most High. And the only way to fix that situation is to turn back to righteousness. Let's jump down to verse 22. It says, Even the righteousness of the Most High, which is by faith of Yahawashai, unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. So, righteousness can be achieved through faith in Yahawashai, and we need that righteousness. Why? Verse 23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of the Most High. Now notice, it doesn't say that all were born sinners. It says that all have sinned and fell short of the righteousness of the Most High. See, Paul started off by explaining that everyone had gone away from the righteousness of the Most High which resulted in no one doing good. Therefore, all have sinned as a result of turning away from the Most High, not because they were born a sinner. Let's go back to Romans 5 and 12. It says, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin. Watch this. And so death passed upon all men. See, the original sin doctrine says that sin passed upon all men. But the verse says that death passed upon all men. Why? It says, for that all have sinned. See, everybody has committed a sin. So death comes upon all men because death is the result of committing sin. Let's jump down to verse 18. It says, Therefore, as by the offense of one, that's Adam, it says, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. So, the disobedience of Adam brought sin into the world, which brought condemnation upon everyone who disobeyed the Most High's law the way Adam did. It says, 
Even so, by the righteousness of one, that's Yahweh Shai, it says, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. So Yahweh Shai made it possible to be free of that condemnation through his sacrifice. Verse 19. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So people read this and they say, see, everybody became sinners because of Adam's disobedience. Well, it doesn't say that everybody became sinners. It says many were made sinners. The reason that many were made sinners is because when Adam fell, sin came into the world and then many people followed their own desires like Adam did. And as a result, they fell into sin like Adam did. So Adam's disobedience opened the door of sin, which others can now go in. It says, so by the obedience of one, Yahweh Shai, shall many be made righteous. You see? So Yahweh Shai's obedience opened the door so that many could enter in. So we can either follow Adam's example of sin or Yahweh Shai's example of righteousness. Either way, you don't start out as a sinner. You become a sinner once you break the Most High's law. Now, let's look at some of the other verses that are used to support the original sin doctrine. This is Psalm chapter 58 and verse 3. It says, The wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. So some people say that this verse shows that everyone is born a sinner. The first problem is, this scripture is referring specifically to the wicked, not everybody. But even if this verse was talking about everybody, it still doesn't support being born a sinner. Something has to take place first. Let's read it again. It says, the wicked are estranged from the womb. So the wicked are strangers to the most high from the time that they're born. In other words, he already knows that they're going to be wicked. It says, they go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. Notice it says, they go astray, meaning they walk away from righteousness. They don't start off unrighteous. They go astray from righteousness once they are born. As they grow in age, they indulge in wickedness and get further and further away from righteousness. Let's look at an example. This is Romans 9 and 10. It says, And not only this, but when Rebekah also had conceived by one, even by our father Isaac, verse 11, for the children being not yet born, watch this, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of the Most High, according to election, might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. So here you have two children in the womb who haven't done anything good or anything bad because they're not even born yet. Verse 12, it was said unto her, the elder shall serve the younger. Verse 13, as it is written, Jacob have I loved, the most high loved Jacob while he was in the womb. It says, but Esau have I hated. So the most high hated Esau while he was in the womb, before he was even born. See, Esau was a stranger to the most high while he was still in the womb because the most high had already chosen Jacob. Esau hadn't done anything yet, but he was already a stranger to the most high. Now, we know that after Esau was born, he and his descendants became the ultimate enemies of the most high. The nation of Edom is considered to be the most wicked nation in the Bible. But was Esau born a sinner? No, he was born a normal man 
But just like the scripture says, he started to go astray as soon as he came out of the womb. As Esau grew, he became more and more wicked to the point that the Most High promised to destroy his seed from off the face of the earth. Now let's go to another verse that's used to support the original sin doctrine. This is Psalms 51 and 5. This is David talking. It says, Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. So people say that this verse proves that everyone is born a sinner. That's not what David is saying. David said, Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Now, when does conception take place? What does it mean to conceive? It means to get pregnant. So being conceived in sin is not the same thing as being born a sinner. When David's mother got pregnant with him, the world that he was born into was a sinful world. So he was conceived in sin, not born a sinner. You see, what is sin according to the Bible? This is 1 John chapter 3 and verse 4. It says, Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law. Here it is. For sin is the transgression of the law. So, if you don't break a law, then you are not a sinner. Nobody is breaking a law while they're being born. However, after you're born, then you can go astray from the Most High and break a law, which in turn makes you a sinner. See, the problem is people are confusing having a sinful nature with being born a sinner. Those are two different things. Mankind is born with a sinful nature because the flesh is a carnal substance. But you don't become a sinner until you submit to your sinful nature and commit a sin. Without the Spirit of the Most High to guide us, we would all fall into sin. This is Romans 7 and 18. This is Paul talking. It says, For I know that in me, that is, in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. So Paul is talking about having a sinful nature. He said, I know there's nothing good in me when it comes to my flesh. It says, for to will is present with me, meaning I want to do right. It says, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. So Paul said, I don't know how to do right through my flesh. Verse 19, for the good that I would, I do not. In other words, the things that I want to do, I end up not doing them. It says, but the evil which I would not, that I do. Paul said the things I don't want to do, that's what I end up doing. Verse 20. Now, if I do that, I would not. In other words, if I'm doing things I don't want to do, it says, it is no more I that do it. It's not me doing it. It says, but sin that dwelleth in me. In other words, it's this carnal flesh that's pulling me towards sin. My spirit, which is the real me, doesn't want to go against the most high. But this flesh is overpowering me. Verse 21. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. Verse 22. For I delight in the law of the Most High after the inward man, meaning my spirit loves the Most High's law. Verse 23. But I see another law in my members. You see, something that's happening in this flesh. It says, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin. Watch this. Which is in my members. See, the flesh desires to sin because the flesh is carnal, but the spirit desires to be righteous. And that's the battle that every believer faces on a daily basis. 
Verse 24. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Who's going to deliver me from this constant battle that I'm going through with my flesh? Verse 25. I thank the Most High through Yahweh Shai, our Lord. See, Yahweh Shai is going to come back and will be changed into glorified bodies, which are not made of carnal substance. And then we'll be free from even the desire to sin because it's this flesh that makes you want to do wrong. It says, so then with the mind in the spirit, it says, I myself serve the law of the most high. But watch this. But with the flesh, the law of sin. So again, it's our fleshly bodies that are drawn towards sin. And that's something that we all have to deal with. But nobody is born a sinner because you have to submit to your sinful nature first and commit a sin before you can be a sinner. This is Romans 8 and 19. It says, For the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of the Most High. See, the Most High is the creator and we are the creatures. So we're waiting to be glorified as the sons and daughters of the Most High. Why? Verse 20. For the creature was made subject to vanity. See that? We were created with human flesh and our flesh is from the earth and therefore it's not naturally holy. So it identifies with sin. So therefore we have a propensity towards sin. We lean towards it. It says, not willingly, we didn't ask to be made this way. The Most High made us this way. But why? It says, but by reason of him who have subjected the same in hope. In other words, the Most High designed us with a propensity towards sin so that we would have to depend on him for deliverance. Verse 21. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of the Most High. The Most High is going to deliver us from our sinful nature and give us a spiritual nature. And then we won't have the desire to sin anymore. Now, let's go to another verse that they use. This is Ephesians 2 and 3. It says, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. Here it is. And were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. So some people read this verse and they say, see, we are the children of wrath by nature. And they equate that to mean that we are born sinners. But again, that's not what this verse is saying. Let's read it again. It says, Among whom also we all had our conversation in times past, watch this, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. So what is Paul saying? Paul is talking about mankind's desire to fulfill the lust of the flesh. Everybody deals with that. Yahweh Shai said himself that the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So since everybody has to deal with the carnal desires of the flesh, it says, And were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Right. Because our human nature is carnal. So by nature, we were the children of wrath, but we can overcome the flesh through the power of the spirit and then become the children of the most high. So again, no one is born a sinner. You become a sinner once you break the most high's law. See, the original sin doctrine just doesn't add up and it forces people to have to come up with ways to explain how Yahweh Shai was born sinless. Now, some people are not going to like this part, but it is what it is. 
People say that Joseph was not Yahweh Shai's biological father because if he was, then the original sin would have passed on to him. But the problem with that theory is, even if Yahweh Shai only came from Mary, he would still be affected by original sin because Mary was born from a man and a woman. So Mary would be affected by original sin, which in turn would be passed on to Yahweh Shai. You see, Mary was not sinless and her blood was passed on to Yahweh Shai. Blood is the source of DNA and every child has the mitochondrial DNA of their mother. So if the purpose of Yahweh Shai being born of a virgin is so that he is not affected by sinful blood, then we have a big problem because Mary was not sinless and her blood was passed on to Yahweh Shai. That's why people who believe in the virgin birth doctrine, they have to take a serious look at what they believe. But I already did a video on the virgin birth doctrine, so I'm just going to move on. But let me say this for the record. Yahweh Shai being sinless has nothing to do with his blood. Yahweh Shai was sinless because he did not commit a sin. And because he didn't commit a sin, that's what made his blood precious. Just for clarity. Now, other people try to get around the Yahweh Shai problem by making him into a different type of man. This is Romans 8 and 3. It says, For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, the Most High sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. So some people read this verse and they say, see, he had the likeness of sinful flesh, but it wasn't the same as normal human flesh. They say it looked like normal human flesh, but it really wasn't. Well, here's the thing. Yes, it was. Yahweh Shai had normal human flesh. The word likeness in this verse does not mean that it just looked like human flesh. It means it was like everybody else's flesh. This is Genesis 5 and 3. It says, And Adam lived 130 years and begot a son, here it is, in his own likeness, after his image, and called his name Seth. So Adam had a son in his likeness. Does that mean that his son didn't have human flesh? Of course not. All it means is that Adam's son looked like him. So Yahweh Shai didn't have a special kind of flesh. He had normal human flesh, just like everybody else. See, in order to justify the original sin doctrine, you have to come up with all types of crazy stuff. They say Yahweh Shai had a different type of flesh, and that's why he wasn't born a sinner. But the Bible says the exact opposite. This is Hebrews chapter 2 and 14. Now, this is talking about Yahweh Shai. It says, For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, the same way that people are made of human flesh and blood, it says, He also himself likewise took part of the same. Now, here it clearly says that Yahweh Shai had the same flesh that everybody else had. He had to have the same flesh as everybody else. Why? It says that through death, he might destroy him that had the power of death. That is the devil. In other words, since Yahweh Shai had the same human flesh as everybody else, when he conquered sin in that flesh and then died and rose from the dead, he made it possible for us to be forgiven for our sins and to achieve eternal life just like he has. If he didn't do it with human flesh, then we would not be able to be justified with the Most High in our flesh. So as we see, Yahweh Shai had the same flesh as we have. And again, even if you believe that he was born of a virgin, he still came out of the womb of a woman who committed sins. And yet we know that he was not a sinner. This is 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 20. It says, 
Now then, we are ambassadors for Yahweh Shai. As though the Most High did beseech you by us, we pray you in Yahweh Shai's stead, be ye reconciled to the Most High. Verse 21. For he hath made him, Yahweh Shai, to be sin for us. Watch this. Who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of the Most High in him. You see? So Yahweh Shai was sinless. This is 1 Peter 2 and 21. It says, For even hereunto were ye called, because Yahweh Shai also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. Verse 22, Who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. Again, we see that Yahweh Shai did not commit a sin. He was blameless, without a spot or wrinkle, even though he was born with human flesh. This is Hebrews 4 and 14. It says, Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Yahweh Shai, the Son of the Most High, let us hold fast our profession. Verse 15. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the filling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are. Here it is. Yet without sin. So Yahweh Shai was tempted to do wrong just like we are because this flesh is weak, but he conquered the flesh. So there is no such thing as being born a sinner. We become sinners after we commit a sin. Now, let's go back to the beginning in the Garden of Eden after Adam and Eve committed the first sin. Let's see if the judgment that the Most High gave them was that everybody born from that point on would automatically be sinners. This is Genesis chapter 3 and verse 16. This is the judgment that the Most High gave Adam and Eve as a result of their sin. It says, Unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband. Meaning you're going to desire to rule over your husband. It says, And he shall rule over thee, but he's going to rule over you instead. That's why Paul said that the husband is the head, as also saith the law. So the only judgment that Eve got in regards to her offspring is that she would experience pain during childbirth. Verse 17. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it, here it is. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Verse 18. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. Verse 19. And the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground. For out of it was thou taken... For dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. So the judgment that Adam received was that the ground was now cursed. And therefore, he was going to have to work hard in order to be able to provide for himself and his family. That's it. There was no judgment at all given to Adam in reference to his children. Let's jump down to verse 22. It says, And Yahweh said, Behold, the man is become as one of us to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. So there's nothing in the text that says that once this happened, everybody born after this point was born a sinner. The Bible doesn't say that. In fact, we know that when Adam and Eve had their first children, Cain and Abel, in the next chapter, 
that the Most High considered Abel to be righteous. Yahawashai told us that Abel was righteous. This is Matthew chapter 23 and verse 35. This is Yahawashai talking. It says, That upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth. Watch this. From the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of Zacharias, the son of Barachias, whom ye slew between the temple and the altar. So Yahawashai said that Abel was righteous, which means that his blood was not tainted with original sin. He didn't say anything about Abel being born a sinner. Now, we know that Cain was wicked, but was Cain born a sinner or did he become a sinner? This is Genesis chapter 4 and verse 3. It says, And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto Yahweh. So Cain brought a peace offering to the Most High from the ground. Verse 4, it says, And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. So Abel brought a peace offering to the Most High from his flock. It says, And Yahweh had respect unto Abel and to his offering. Verse 5, But unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. Now notice, Abel brought an offering from his flock, but Cain brought an offering to the Most High from the ground. And the ground was cursed at that point. So the Most High rejected that offering. Verse 6. And Yahweh said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth? And why is thy countenance fallen? So the Most High asked Cain, he said, Why are you upset about me rejecting your offering? Watch this. Verse 7. If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? So the Most High said, Cain, if you do what's right, won't I accept your offering? But watch this. It says, and if thou doest not well, if you don't do what's right, it says, sin lieth at the door, and unto thee shall be his desire. Meaning, if you don't do right, sin is going to be waiting to overtake you. It says, and thou shalt rule over him. Meaning, you should be ruling over sin instead. So Cain was not born a sinner. He had the option to do right. But he was told that if he didn't do right, sin was waiting to overtake him. Well, Cain chose not to do right. And guess what happened? Verse 8. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother. And it came to pass when they were in the field. Here it is. That Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. So just like the Most High said, Sin overtook Cain, and Cain became the first murderer under the influence of the spirit of Satan. Again, man has a sinful nature, meaning a propensity towards sin. But you have to commit a sinful act first before you become a sinner. That's why the Most High told Cain, if you don't do what's right, sin is going to be waiting to get you. But Cain didn't listen, and sin overtook him. He was not born a sinner. He became a sinner. Again, what is sin according to the Bible? This is 1 John chapter 3 and verse 4. It says, Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law. Here it is. For sin is the transgression of the law. So we see that sin is the transgression of the law or the breaking of the law. And we can find the same thing in the Tanakh. Psalms chapter 32 and verse 1, it says, Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven. Watch this. Whose sin is covered. So again, we see that sin is the transgression of the law. And if you don't transgress the law, then you are not a sinner. So, the original sin doctrine is a lie. Nobody is born a sinner. You become a sinner once you break the law. Now, before I end this video, please be advised. 
All general comments are accepted. If you disagree with something that I say, you have that right. However, if you attack me on a personal level outside of the scriptures and resort to name calling and childish, unspiritual behavior, your comment will be erased and you will be blocked. Also, if you disagree with something that I teach, that's fine. You have the right to comment about it. But if you make a comment in disagreement and you don't use scriptures to support what you're saying, I won't block you, but your comment will be erased because I deal with scriptures, not opinions. Now to the sincere Israelites who watch my videos, I'm not talking to y'all. I appreciate you guys for taking the time out to watch and listen. But I'm talking to these immature, non-spiritual trolls who always have something to say. But when you go to their page, nine times out of ten, they don't have one single video teaching anything. But yet, they want to come on my page and teach in the comment section. I'm not allowing that anymore. So, with that being said, as always, I hope that somebody got some understanding from this video. And with that, I say... Shalom.